What's up guys and welcome to another episode of the Cracker Pack series. Today, for the first time on the actual series, we're actually opening up a pack of War of the Spark. Really excited about this. Obviously the newest set from Wizards. Very excited to be opening it. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if it is a limited perspective, so we'll hopefully be able to determine what our pack one pick one would actually be if we were drafting this set. I have drafted this at least a little bit. A uh, lot of fun, a lot of really cool planeswalkers, obviously, so we'll see what we get. Our first card is Grim Initiate. It is a 1-1 one, one for 1 red. It has first strike, and when it dies, it amasses for 1. If you, if you don't know what amass does, it just means put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on an army creature you control. If you don't control one, you create a 0-0 zero, zero black zombie artifact uh, or zombie army creature token first, excuse me, uh, and then you put that 1-1 one, one counter on it. A mass is a really, really good mechanic. This is a very, very good one drop in my opinion. Uh, being able to aggressively swing in early is great. Because this has first strike, you really get to enable that. And because it doesn't really matter if it dies that much, uh, it doesn't actually feel as bad as a one drop to die or at some point in maybe the mid game or even the early like mid game somewhere in that range. Uh, so I really like this card. Not necessarily first pickable, but definitely pretty good. Uh, Martyr of the Cause is a 2-2 two -two for one and a white. Uh, when it dies, you proliferate. So if you don't know what that is, choose any number of permanents and or players, then give each uh, another counter of each kind that they already have. So uh, for the, just to clarify a little bit, you do get to choose which things get another counter of whatever kind that they have. Uh, this obviously has a lot of synergies with Planeswalkers. Not only that, uh, but it is an on-curve uh, two-drop. It's a 2-2 two -two for two with upside. Uh, obviously, it does have to die for that upside, but that's kind of okay. Uh, it's probably going to die at some point anyway. It is just a 2-2, two -two, but uh, I actually do kind of like this card. I like the initiate over it, to be honest, uh, but this is definitely a perfectly good card. Uh, Contingents contentious plan i hope i'm saying that correctly is a uh, sorcery for one and a blue proliferate uh, and then draw a card so not only do you get to do the counter thing that we just talked about but you've also draw a card this is again pretty good for planeswalkers but not really good by itself you want to be in a deck that's going to make sure the counters actually matter luckily that does work with planeswalkers and a mass so if you have a plus one plus one uh uh, a zombie army token out you get to buff it a little bit or if you have a planeswalker out you put another loyalty counter on it so lots of potential for bonuses there but i'd rather have those those cards out first uh blind blast is an instant for two and a red it deals one damage to target creature that creature can't block this turn and then you draw a card I found that this is very, very much at its best in the aggressive decks because the creature cannot block after it's dealt one damage. What I don't like about this is it's usually pretty difficult to kill a creature. Granted, with things like a mass running around, if they've only amassed for one, it's pretty easy to just pick off a token, which is nice. There's generally some targets there. Uh, but I don't like that this doesn't also hit Planeswalkers. I think that would make it so much better in a Planeswalker focused set. Uh, but being able to draw a card off of it is also nice. I find, again, if I'm in that aggressive strategy, this is the perfect card for that deck. But in general, I did, didn't want this early pick. <clears throat> uh, Crunch Wrangler is a 2-1 for 1 in a green. It does have Trample. And then whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on the Wrangler. Uh, I find this to be an okay 2-drop in a big green deck. Uh, I find it a little bit difficult to keep this around uh, just long enough. I mean, we just looked at Blind Blast, for instance. Blind Blast would take this out. Uh, but uh, if you can keep it around, or if you have this and then the follow-up play of something maybe in the late game, then it's pretty good. It's going to serve its purpose pretty well. But uh, in general, I don't really like this card that much. I think it's just okay. Uh, and so for that reason, definitely not going to first pick it. <coughs> uh, Aid the Fallen is a sorcery for one and a black. Choose one or both. Uh, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand or and or i should say return target planeswalker card from your graveyard to your hand recursion like this is always more than welcome in a deck that has a lot of creatures and or planeswalkers especially uh for two mana it's fine if you can only pick one of these if it only applies to one it's perfectly reasonable in my opinion um obviously if you can get the double value it's great uh for two mana being able to pull back two cards from your graveyard that's fantastic a lot of times you'll be able to if it's at the point where there's stuff in your graveyard 
Uh, a lot of times you'll be able to play this and then maybe play at least one of the threats that you pulled back. Uh, and so for that reason, it's very, very good. I'd rather have the threats and be in black first, of course. Uh, but honestly, this is a great card. It's perfectly reasonable to have one, maybe even two of these, depending on your deck, uh, in a limited strategy for sure. Uh, Giant Growth is an instant for one green. Uh, target creature gets plus three, plus three until the end of the turn. This is just a very, very, very efficient uh, uh, combat trick. Excuse me, almost lost the statement there. Uh, being able to just pump something up for only one mana is great. Pumping it by three on both power and toughness for one mana is insane. That is a lot of value off of one card. If you're in green, this is exactly the kind of thing you want. Not a reason to be in green. Combat tricks are rarely a reason to be in any color, but if you're in them, this is the kind of card that you want to pick up for sure. <coughs> Uh, top of the statue is an instant for two and a white tap target permanent if it's an artifact you destroy it and then you draw a card uh, this is okay and like a blue white maybe tempo flyers style deck uh, being able to tap a permanent is going to be good maybe tap down a blocker if you hit an artifact with it obviously it's destroyed that's great uh, and then you also draw a card so what i like about this is this artifact hate built into a tempo card uh, and so because of that, it's actually main deckable sometimes. It's obviously not amazing. It's not like a super powerful kill spell or anything like that, but I do actually kind of like it. If I'm in white, I wouldn't mind maybe playing one of these, but in general, it's not a great card. It's not something I'm looking to pick up early by any means. Uh, Callous Dismissal is a sorcery for one and a blue return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then you amass one. I actually really, really like this card. This sees play in some constructed decks just because it's such a good tempo play. Uh, not only do you bounce a permanent for only two mana, and it is any non-land permanent. It's not just creatures or something like that, but you can bounce a Planeswalker, you can bounce anything. Uh, but you also amass one, which means you stick a threat right afterwards. Uh, and so, yeah, it's only a 1-1, one, one, but if you've already got like an arm army token out, it pumps that army token up a little bit, or uh, it just gives you a new creature all for two mana. That's pretty good. Uh, I actually really like this. I think I like it more than the Initiate, honestly. Uh, especially at Common, it's a pretty good card. So definitely something I like. Uh, Gateway Plaza is a land. It is a gate. Uh, and when it enters the battlefield, it does come into play tapped. You also have to pay one of any color or sacrifice it. Uh, but it does tap for one of any color. So you can actually tap this for any of the colors that you may need. If you're in a multicolor strategy, which generally speaking, you'll be in at least two colors, this is a perfectly fine card to pick up. I would say if you're not in three colors or more, it's probably not worth it. Uh, it's fine because you can fix your mana, but you do kind of take a turn off if you're playing it early, especially to actually just play this card. And so I don't like it for that reason. Uh, it's slow. It slows you down. It comes into play tapped. You have to tap a land in addition to it coming into play tapped. Uh, and so there's a lot of downside to playing it in a deck that's trying to move very, very quickly. Uh, and so it's fine in multicolor strategies, not generally speaking uh, in just your everyday deck. Uh, Tobalt's Razor is a 1-2 for 1 and a red. When it dies, it deals 1 damage to any target. And then for 1 and a red, you can give it plus 2 plus 0 until the end of the turn. Worth noting, you can do that as many times as you'd like. I've been very, very impressed with this card. It's very, very good to be able to play this on turn two, <coughs> excuse me, uh, swing in with it, leaving up the mana to pump it up just in case. And then if you don't need it, you have the opportunity to stick a second threat on your main phase two of your turn three. Uh, so I really like this. Also, the one damage to any target is really good because that can not only be a planeswalker or the player, but maybe in a mass creature token or something along those lines. You can pick some early game stuff off with this. Just a great aggressive card by all mounts. Uh, definitely the card so far that I would be picking. Uh, Flex Channeler is a 2-2 for 2 and a blue. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you proliferate. This is obviously a very powerful card. Being able to proliferate on command is pretty great, especially if you've got a lot of instants or something along those lines. Just think if you had this out and then you were Callous Dismissaling, you get to do the Callous Dismissal and proliferate. Like That's very good value for sure. The problem with it is that, generally speaking, limited decks are focused a lot more on the creature side of things. So uh, you're not necessarily going to be building a lot of cards in that are just spells, like instants and sorceries and stuff. You do obviously get to, uh, this works with planeswalkers, things like that. So there's a little bit more lucrative uh, aspect to this than a normal kind of proliferate uh, engine or something along those lines. But 
Uh, I would rather be in a deck where I've got a lot of things to proliferate before wanting this. This is a very good card. It's a very good enabler for those decks. But generally speaking, the Tabalt's Rager is going to be good just on its own. And so I'd pick that over this. Uh, our Planeswalker is Narset, Parter of Veils. It is a five loyalty Planeswalker for one and two blue. Each opponent can't draw more than one card each turn. And then you can minus two and look at the top four cards of your library. You can reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put that into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I found that this card is very, very good and constructed, but not quite as good and limited. A lot of times the draw stuff isn't as impactful because a lot of people don't even necessarily have card draw in their deck, let alone even if they do, it's probably only one or two pieces of draw spell. And so it's really not going to be the focus of the deck. Uh, it does not neuter decks like we see in Constructed, where if you're against like a blue red, is it Drake's deck or Phoenix deck or something like that? This just like shuts that deck down pretty hardcore because they can't draw cards anymore. Uh, but this also doesn't really have the synergies in Limited because of its minus ability, while it is a very powerful one. Uh, being able to pull out a non creature, non land card is fine but again we're not really focused on non-creature non-land cards as much we're looking at a lot of creatures for limited because we win most often on board and so for that reason this is a perfectly fine card to have in blue because it's going to dig you a little bit but it's not as good in my opinion as the rager the rager threatens things so much better it's just a much all-around good card for me uh, and then our rare is neheb dreadhorde champion so it is a 5-4 for 2 and 2 red with Trample. And whenever it deals combat damage to a player or a Planeswalker, you may discard any number of cards. If you do, you draw that many cards and add that much red until, until the end of your turn. You don't lose this mana uh, as steps and phases end. <coughs> this is exactly the kind of red aggressive card that we would want. This is a perfect, perfect uh, first pick for sure. Not only is it just a very, very efficiently costed 5-4 with Trample, uh, but it also has the added bonus of digging you further into your deck and adding mana to your mana pool, which helps you keep playing more and more threats. This is an all-around great card. Perfect, perfect finisher for a red deck for sure. And uh, in my opinion, absolutely the pick of this pack. Uh, if you disagree for some reason, feel free to let me know in the comment section below, but I think that one's a pretty clear one. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Back episode.